Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, welcome to your readings for September 2018, yeah? Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers, but thank you to all the returning subscribers. Uh, your support is everything to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we just recently hit 10,000, and I'm super, super happy. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you to all you guys. You are freaking amazeballs, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just a few things. One, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, and the energies are interchangeable, okay? So it could be you that we're talking about. It could be the other person that we're talking about, if we're talking about another person. Um, these aren't necessarily love readings, but love definitely comes out because I am channeling for the Venus sign. Your Venus sign is uh, how you approach love, how your information about that. So if you are looking for information about like, your love life, I would recommend, me personally, I recommend that you always start with your Venus sign. You can find that out um, if you pull you know uh, pull up your birth chart yeah drop your birth chart now about birth charts um, I want to make a little bit of a uh, bit of a suggestion um, this might be a bit of a long intro if people want to leave a timestamp go right ahead um, but I do recommend that you guys listen to the intro at least once especially if you're watching like a bunch of different signs um, just listen to the intro at least once and then like do whatever um, but uh, I recently got into Vedic Astrology, which is uh, also known as Sidereal, I believe. Um, and uh, I did this because my spiritual team, my spiritual guides really pushed it for me to start investigating. And I did so. And I learned that my signs are different. Okay, So I always thought of, uh, I grew up as a Taurus. My sun sign was Taurus. But then when I did the Eastern chart, the Vedic chart, um, sidereal chart, I learned that my son is actually in Aries. And when, <laughs> when I learned about that and, and I really like investigated and I read it and I like felt it out, it, it immediately clicked. Like it felt right. I was like, Oh, Oh man. Because when I started to look back on like how I present myself, how I like how I work in the world and everything like that, um, I am very much an Aries. <laughs> So that makes sense. I still kind of resonate with Taurus, but um, very much in Aries. So then other than that, you know, in, in the Western chart, um, my moon sign was Leo and my rising sign is Venus. I'm sorry, rising sign is Venus. No, my rising sign is Virgo and my Venus is in Aries. But then in the Eastern chart, my moon sign is Cancer, my rising sign is Leo, and then my Venus is in Pisces. And when I looked at all that uh, that stuff too, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much more sense. Because when it came to the Western chart, I was like, how am I so intuitive, but I don't have, I barely have any water in my chart. I think in the Western chart, I think I have like one planet in Scorpio. Um, and it might, I think it might be Neptune or something. I don't know. But then when it came to the Eastern chart, there was all the water I was missing, right? So for me personally, things really clicked and I understood, I came to a better understanding of myself. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is I encourage you to check that out. Um, you can watch my videos or any of the videos, whether you, whether you resonate more with Western or Eastern astrology, it really doesn't matter. It's just um, all about how you feel how this connects with you, how it resonates with you, okay? Um, so I'm, I put uh, some links to some websites to, that are, I find are to be really, really great um, in giving you your chart. Um, actually, there's one, there's one that actually will give you both, but I'll give you two, two different options. Um, they're going to be in this description box below, and uh, I encourage you guys to, you know, insert your um, your birth data, your birth information, and check it out. See what comes out, and if you resonate with something, go for it, and then start to watch the videos from that point of view. Like if now, if you all of a sudden you find that things are different when it comes to the Eastern chart, and you want, and you kind of resonate with it already, and you want to watch videos uh, in line with that, I encourage you to do so. You know, it's really all about what you resonate with, how, what you feel about the situation. Yeah. Okay. With that said, um, I'll, a few more things. One, you can find me in New York City at Om Shanti Bookshop. 
every Monday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Om Shanti is located on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in the East Village of Manhattan. So come check me out if you're in the area. I would love to meet you guys in person. Um, the, uh, the link to the website uh, for Om Shanti Bookshop is in the description box below. So you can go to the website, get their phone number, give them a call. If you want to schedule a reading beforehand, you're more than welcome to do so. Or at the same time, walk-ins are definitely welcome. Um, and it's a great shop, you know, they've got all kinds of really nice stuff. The crystal selection is fantastic. So if you're into crystals, I recommend coming down and checking us out. We have a lot of great stuff there. Um, you can get some crystals wrapped and put into jewelry for you at the shop. Um, if you do want some crystal wrapping, ask for Martha. She's great at that. Um, what else? Oh, I am available for private readings. Uh, my email address is in the description box below, along with a description of all the readings that I offer, all in the description box. If you would like a personal reading with me, just go down into the description box, look at the options, read through them, see which one might, may work well for you, and then throw shoot me an email. If you don't know which reading would be best for you, go ahead and email me, and we'll chat, and I'll help you decide which one you would like, yeah? Okay, so for the readings this month, um, I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, guys. I love it. It's just so pretty. And then I am closing out the readings with Oracle Guidance from my favorite, Oracle of the Unicorns. Yeah, I love unicorns. I personally believe that I am a unicorn, but you know what? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess that's it. Thank you for sticking in to with the with the long intro with me. If you did, if you didn't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You can't even hear this part of the message anyway. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get to it. Hey Sagittarius, Sagittarius, how are you guys? Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to your reading for September 2018. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're enjoying Virgo season. Yeah, this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> All right, guys, let's just get straight into it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Sagittarius to serve the highest good of all involved for this month of September 2018. All right, Sag. How are y'all doing? How y'all doing, Sag? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Sagittarius. I'm seeing green. I'm also seeing purple. Um, I feel like there are some heart chakra activations going on for some Sagittarians out there. Um, there's some heart healing. There is some wisdom. You're gaining some wisdom maybe around some matters of the heart that you didn't quite understand in the past. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of all I'm getting right now. Okay. Uh, the devil just popped out at me. Um, you might be dealing with some insecurities, some fear. Uh, this could be what you're healing right now. Releasing yourself from some sort of codependency, releasing yourself from some sort of, uh, addiction. Again, fears. Sagittarius. All right, one more shuffle. Coolio, yo. Let's see what we've got for you, Sag. Okay. The Hierophant in reverse. We could be talking divorce here. We could also be talking unconventional wisdom. But we also really could be talking about learning. So this was the energy that I was picking up on with the purple and the green. Um, with some sort of heart chakra activations that are going on or um, just some divine wisdom that's coming in. You're learning about something new. Yeah, this could even be career-wise. 
Ooh, embarking on a new journey, Sagittarius. You're good at that, aren't you? <laughs> All right, so we've got the Five of Cups here. So this is really learning something new about heartbreak. You could have gotten yourself into a situation in which you weren't listening to your higher self. And so that's led to heartbreak. Could be currently. Or you could just be reliving something from the past in which now you're learning from it. That caused you heartbreak. Okay? And you've got the Eight of Pentacles here. So this is doing the work in relation to what you're learning about. And if we're talking about divorce... Yeah, it could be, because you've got the Five of Cups here. The Hierophant does talk about marriage. You know, so if we're talking about divorce, you could be doing the work to um, move through that process, the hard work. But I'm really getting unconventional wisdom here. And that unconventional wisdom could be causing you some sort of regret or remorse because it's changing things for you. Like it's changing your perspective. Okay. So you, you've either, you're either in the process of learning something or you've already learned something that has caused your heart chakra chakra to open up a little more. And so now because of that expansion, three cups have spilled and you're like, well, shit, I kind of wish I knew that before unconventional wisdom. I just heard it again. But ultimately, keep in mind that you've got two cups behind you still. So all is not lost. All right? And so now you're going to be doing the work or you're, you're inspired or wanting to or actively doing the work to fix things in accordance with what you have now learned. Okay? And ultimately, underneath that, you've got the three of cups. This could talk about union. But it's also celebration. This could be coming together with soul tribe, soul family, people, the other people that resonate with this, with this unconventional wisdom that you have come across. Finding people that you really, truly resonate on a level that you may not have ever really thought was possible. That's pretty fantastic, Saj. All right. Current set of energies for the first half of the month, we have Eight of Cups. So this wisdom is causing you to walk away from something, leave something behind in order to find some deeper understanding. And of course that would cause regret or, or remorse or sorrow because you've spent so much time putting these eight cups together and you're finding out that those eight cups just aren't enough, weren't enough. So now you're on the wow. So now you're on the search for those two cups that are behind you. Boop. In this five of cups energy. Okay, eight of cups is coupled with the four of pentacles in reverse. I like that, Sag. I really like that. Even though it's painful, even though it sucks, it hurts. You're finally releasing ego, is what I just heard. You're finally releasing ego that has kept you stuck. This unconventional wisdom has really done a number on you, but it seems to have done a number in a very positive way, even though it sucks a little bit, even though it's a little painful. Second set of current energies for the first half of the month, you've got the seven of wands. Defensiveness. Boundaries. Blocking. This could, is, I mean, this is your energy too, as a fire sign. It could be defensiveness or blocking against another fire sign or just anyone that's not serving you anymore. Finally putting the kibosh, finally putting the end to this. Okay. Defending yourself against the opposition. The seven of wands is coupled, whoa, <laughs> whoa, two sevens at once. We've got the seven of cups here. So you're taking some time and putting up some boundaries to really come to terms with this unconventional wisdom that I keep hearing about. That's not a bad thing. I really feel like you need some time and some space to really understand this. Okay? 
Current challenge for the first half of the month, you got, ooh, man, another seven. Seven of swords. This unconventional wisdom has really illuminated some deception for you. Yeah, look, Sag, or someone connected with a Sag, I don't know, whatever, but whoever I'm connecting with here, yeah, this is pretty shitty right now. But it's all serving a greater purpose. What is that greater purpose? To get you to live a better version of your life than you have in the past. So there are going to be some growing pains. There's going to be some hurt, some sacrifice even. But ultimately, it's serving your highest good. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Seven of Swords is coupled with boop, the lovers in reverse. Wow. The lovers um, does symbolize Gemini. Seven of Swords could be, this could be uh, another air sign, Aquarius or Libra. Doesn't have to be. But the lovers is about choice. Oftentimes, I see it as choice over vice or virtue. And I kind of get the idea, I get the feeling that with this Seven of Swords, your choice in the past has been a bit of vice. But it, you were deceived in it, that it, did, it wasn't really, it didn't seem like vice. It wasn't, it was deceptive in that you couldn't tell it was a, a sort of vice. But now you see differently and you understand different and you're like, oh, damn, what the hell did I do? Now, it doesn't have to be that extreme. But either way, it's pretty powerful. That's just what I'm feeling. Your current challenge is overcoming this. Seeing the truth behind the lies. Seeing the truth behind the deception. And choosing something different for yourself. For your highest good. Not what the convention says. This very much could be a religious situation. Very, very much so. Okay? Okay. Potential outcome for the first half of the month, you get eight of wands in reverse. So yeah, you really could be blocking something or someone out. Not wanting to communicate with them anymore. Also, not really wanting to communicate with anyone, much of anyone at least really, because you have a lot of shit to sort out. Eight of wands is coupled with Heller the Fool. Embarking on a brand new journey of your own making this time. Not going in the same direction anymore. Moving towards something better. All right, for the second half of the month, Sagittarius, we've got uh, 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 upcoming energies for the second half of the month. Starting over, Page of Pentacles. Very good, though. It's daunting, I get it. It's daunting, but it's there. And with this wisdom that you've acquired, you can only go up from here. So this actually either is or probably should be pretty exciting. Okay. Page of Pentacles is coupled with. Ooh, Queen of Swords in reverse though. There could be an apology here coming. Maybe you're giving an apology or someone else might be, maybe because you're standing your ground here and you're not really accepting certain things from the past, someone might come forward with an apology for being this kind of Queen of Swords energy. It's entirely possible. Yeah, um... In starting though, over, though, I would caution against extreme discrimination. Okay? Yes, there, there are some things that happened in the past that you're not happy about, but don't let that jade you, or even don't let it jade you too much. Like, so much so that you're just cutting shit out willy-nilly, left, right, and center, without really understanding what it is you're cutting out, Okay? I understand you're kind of vulnerable right now, but you don't have to be extremely defensive. 
all right? Second set of uncupping upcoming energies for the second half of the month. You got ah the hermit in reverse. So this could be talking about Virgo season. Maybe towards the end of Virgo season. Um, you could also be coming out of hiding, coming out of introspective energies with the hermit in reverse. Okay, the Hermit is coupled with, okay, the Five of Swords in reverse. Yeah, I like that. It seems, it seems that it, any introspection you may have done over Virgo season or throughout this month, towards the end of the month, you could be coming out of it with a much greater position or a much deeper understanding and no longer giving or accepting any sort of self-defeating energy, uh, shit starter energy, like just no. You've moved past that now. You're seeing beyond that. You're seeing above it even. So your, this new light that you found or this new wisdom that you've acquired helps you see through this five of swords energy. Mm -hmm. I like it, I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, upcoming challenge for the second half of the month. Three of Swords. But I feel like this is not necessarily you getting your heart broken. You could be breaking someone else's heart. Just by merely saying, no, I don't want this anymore. And the Three of Swords is falling right under the lovers. Okay? So maybe this wisdom that you've gotten, maybe you learn or you're starting to find out or you might find out in the second half of the month that someone's been cheating because the lovers can talk about a love triangle, a choice between two people, vice or virtue, vice being the side piece, virtue being the mate. Three of swords is coupled with, oh boy, the king of cups in reverse. Someone's definitely been cheating. And you are most likely going to find out in the second half of the month, Sagittarius. Or maybe you're been, you've been cheating, Sag. Uh, I'm getting Scorpio energy from this King of Cups here. There might be a third-party situation with a Scorpio. I'm really getting heavy Scorpio here from the King of Cups in reverse. Deception, lies, cheating, backstabbing. The current challenge for the second half of the month is going to be dealing with this. Maybe you found out already, or maybe you're gonna find out in the beginning of the month, or you found out in the beginning of the month, and you're really dealing with it, coming to terms with it in the second half. The King of Cups here is not so, it's pretty emotionally unavailable. So this would be why this person would prefer to just be uh, the, third, the third wheel, the side piece, non-committal, and doesn't really, wouldn't really care whether you're in a relationship with someone else or not, which is why they would be willing to engage in this kind of love triangle. So this is the energy of the other person, male or female, doesn't matter. The King of Cups is also emotionally manipulative. So that would be another reason why they would not really care whether or not you're in a relationship with a committed relationship with someone else because they're just after what they want, regardless of who it hurts in the process. Ooh. Okay, um, upcoming energies, I'm sorry, potential outcome for the second half of the month, Sagittarius. You got the Page of Wands in reverse. I literally, what I really want to say with this Page of Wands in reverse is releasing a fuckboy. <laughs> oh. 
Good Lord. Coupled with, yeah, the Six of Pentacles in reverse. I mean, there's no balance of give and take. It's just take, 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 take. Release that shit. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ending. It's over. Done. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> oh, Sag. Sagimitaz. So that's some pretty heavy energy there, boo. And I guess the unconventional wisdom comes into play here because in order to really learn this lesson, you had to go through this experience. Also, with this cheating energy here, or at least this Three of Swords with the King of Cups, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It could be, a, this could be a business situation. Um, I was picking up heavy energies of religious establishments. So especially in this case, this could be, I want to say like the pastor or just a, a, a major religious figure, a religious leader, or someone that you really look up to for spiritual advice. Just in it for themselves with the Three of Swords and the King of Cups in reverse. Like not really looking to be supportive of the flock. Really just looking for status and emotional validation um, to feed off of the emotions of others. I'm also picking up that they are just in it for money. That's for some of you. Yeah, and I mean, look, the Six of Pentacles in reverse with the Knight of, uh, I'm sorry, the Page of Wands in reverse. Look, the Page of Wands is a grown man in this deck. Look at that. And what I'm getting here is with the Page of Wands in reverse, they're using their power in a very negative way. They're very charismatic. And they're probably just in it for the money. Six of Pentacles in reverse. Unconventional wisdom. You had to go through this process to understand it better. And I just, I just saw 2020 on the counter. And I just heard hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into some Oracle guidance from the unicorns here. Spirit, please bring forward the best messages for Sagittarius for the month of September. From the unicorns. Unicorn. I love unicorn. All right. One more shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got for you. Oops. There it goes a little feather. Give me a second. Okay. All right, Spirit. Best messages, please, for the month of September for Sagittarius. September 2018. Please, Spirit, thank you so much. There we go. Ha ha! Yo, check it out. You can't make this shit up, guys. Awareness. Let me, let, just, 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 just look at that. Just let that marinate for a second. Awareness. Uh-huh. Live in the moment. Be conscious of your thoughts. Look for signs and guidance. But the big message here, the deep, deep message here is stop looking for guidance externally and start looking for it internally. Do not allow charlatans to guide you through things they really have no care about. All they want is your money. All they want is your energy. They're feeding their own egos here. They're not in it to serve anyone else but themselves. Look within. Choose to trust your intuition over the words of someone else that is external. Good Lord. Unconventional wisdom right there. Boop. <laughs> All right, Sagittarius, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please, please 
Trust yourselves. Yeah? I hope you have a great September. Even though it looks like it's going to be a little rough. <laughs> much love to you guys. I love you all so very much. Thank you again for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of October. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!